start recording. What? The the lecture? Wait. Yeah, like They're just on save... YouTube. Okay, so you don't have to have like a physical copy like YouTube. Oh, I mean, they're illegally downloaded. But yeah, you oh, okay. just use VLC and you like go through a method of putting in like the uh the like YouTube videos URL for it, and then you can download it using VLC. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. So let's start the show. Where were we last time? We were making a login project. Yeah. And we started on the <sighs> index file that the login yeah. project would start from. So welcome to my donkey site, click here to log in. Okay. So let's uh, open up a uh, Chrome. Chrome. Bow.kim, login. And so if we click on here, it should go to the login page. I don't think we made a login page. There is no login page yet, so it's not found. So we can make a login page in here. Login.php. Okay, and uh, you know, we can just uh, put a form in here, let's say. Uh, so we'll just do another. I'm just going to copy the template from here. Boop. We don't need this part. And we'll say login to Bow's donkey site. Login to the donkeys. And then we put a form in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, let's see. We'll do a div. And we'll give it a class. The div will be a uh, input group, so we can group our inputs together. Mm -hmm. The label and an input tag. Okay, kind of like what we did before, with the form, and we'll say this is uh, user. We'll name this input user, and we'll give it an ID of user. And we'll just copy this, paste that shit, and the password, input name, oh, right, and type, this will be text, type for this will be password, so that it doesn't show, mm -hmm. and password, all right, so, we got that shit covered, now, login page, we need a submit button, I guess. So here's a button. Log in. Type submit. All right, so we can do Bowski. And the password will be donkey1234. Let's log in. And right now it's doing the, by default, it's doing the get method. Yeah. And we want to do the post method instead, so that shit doesn't show up in URLs. So method, we'll do post. And for the action, for where it should go to, we can mm -hmm. make it go into the same one. So you could say something like, this is a default, like a variable that's already in PHP you could use. Mm-hmm. So you could do something like this and do a uh, PHP self, but that's, you don't want to be doing that. That's uh, not a safe way to do it. Just give it a direct URL usually. That's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. Or a local URL. Uh, the URL we're going to give it is, uh, uh, it's going to be process login.php. Okay. 
So it'll send it to the process login.php place. Sound good? Yeah. So we'll make a new folder from here, process. Oops, that's not a folder. New directory, process. Inside, we will do a new file called login. So a lot of fucking things called login here. Mm -hmm. But so be it. So processing this file, this log process.login or slash login file is specifically only for processing logins and logouts. And that's all it'll mm -hmm. do. That way we can capsulize that security risk to just one file. So if anything goes okay. wrong, we always know where to go for it, right? Okay. All right. So, uh, let's see here. Let's, uh, we want the post. We want to get the post variable or the post array mm -hmm. variable that's sent to us. That's going to have the user variable and it's going to have the password variable. And those are going to look like this when they get passed into us. These are how we're going to play with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus. My fingers are so tired. There we go. So we're going to get these two variables. And uh, we should also put it an action, a hidden action input. Which is, the type is called hidden, but uh, anybody mm -hmm. with developer tools on is able to get to it. So we can't rely on this data to be, you know, accurate. But it's okay. just a way for us to trigger the action to happen, right? So it's, so the variable is going to be called action and the value will be login. So in here, mm -hmm. Where are we? All right, so we'll say when the file starts, if there is a post action equals login, it's very specific, right? If there is that, then we do something. So we'll have some login code here, login code here. Then we'll have a logout code here. Click. Else. Else if. We'll say if post action equals logout. Then we'll do something else, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. Should be pretty simple. Whatever we want to do, we can put in. And the nice way to uh, kind of keep this easy to maneuver, we could just put all of the code in here, you know, in this if statement. Mm -hmm. But a nice way of doing it is to just make a function call and then put mm -hmm. the parameters that you know you're going to use, right? And so this one is going to be user, and then this one is going to be password. And for logout, you don't need either of those things. And this is where session variables comes into play. So we're going to do, so session variables, uh, mm -hmm. Think of it this way. What session variables are is when you reach the server, when a user reaches our server, our Apache mm -hmm. server, they are given a session uh, code that's specifically for them. They mm -hmm. have a session key. And then during that session, they will be, we will be able to save variables specifically for them. So as long as they stay on our servers, as well as like, you know, if they leave the server and come back in five minutes, 
depending on how long you set it for, people mm -hmm. will be able to maintain their session variable on our site for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then using cookies, that's the browser side uh, or the client side, using client side saved data as well as server side saved data, you can mm -hmm. keep them like we can keep aware that like, oh, you're still the same user. You can be on our site without having to log in over and over again. And, you know, uh, while they're on the site, we can keep track of what what they're doing, you know, anything mm -hmm. you want to save. So that's how the PHP login system is going to work. By using the server side's variables, we're going to be able to say, you know, instead of having to pass the variable from page to page each every single time, we can just save it once within the session so that while mm -hmm. they're on the site, we know, oh, you're logged in, you're good to go, right? Okay. So to do session variables, PHP session, there is documentation here for it. Uh, skip that first one from W3School. Sessions. Oh, here we go. Session reference. That's weird. Anyway, so we have sessions by default that turned on. So to start a session, session functions, here we go. Or basic usage, I guess. Mm, there we go. We just start the PHP with a session start. And that okay. lets the server know, okay, we're starting to keep session variables for this mm -hmm. user that's on the site. So as long as this user is on our site, we can use session start per page to know that they're there, right? And so we set, we do session start so that this page knows, okay, we have a session going on. And then, oops, I deleted that. And then let's lo uh, work on our login code here. Boop. Mm -hmm. In our function, and we'll say login. And we could do this with a class, but uh, we can get into classes later. But for right now, just learning to capsulize, you know, pieces of code into functions is good enough. So here you'll see uh, we're just setting up some parameter variables, right? So mm -hmm. we have user and password within this function, and we will say, you know, oh, actually this log out one, instead of having a full function, we could do something else, but for now we can say log out. And we'll say session end, I think. Is it not session end? What is it? Or we can just delete the thing. Session destroy. There we go. So we can do that. Session destroy. And we will want to delete our session variable that we will be using here. because we're going to make a session variable called logged, basically. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna put it to true. And so any page that requires a login, now if it's logged, uh, if the session variable logged is turned up, then there's the user's still gonna be logged in, basically, to do login things. Okay, so for the login function, first we will want to uh, make the MySQLI, so first, let's check if user and password are full, right? Mm -hmm. We want to see not empty user and not empty password. <sighs> Else, we can say you know, we can uh, reply with, uh, we can say, 
you're we are missing your username or password please try again mm -hmm. and to pass this message along back to the page we want to send them back to which would be like the form right mm -hmm. we can do a header to redirect them and we can say location is back to let's say the login page right so that would be like slash login.php for that instead of echoing it out we can just do set a session another session variable here session massage equals that string so mm -hmm. when we go back to the header we can display the session variable because the session variable will pass through, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Now, for when they do have the username and password, we will want to do the MySQLi connection, which I don't remember how to do. So we can just look that up again. Quick start. Uh, connection. Here we go. So we just do this. Da, da, boop. And we will be going on to localhost. Yes, that is true. And the username of this, oh yeah. We're gonna have to set up another user and password and database for where we're all gonna go. Mm -hmm. So let's do that for this project. Let's log into the Bowski server, the Bow.kim server. Oh, that's the wrong password. Okay, got in. We'll want to MySQL. All right, MySQL. Password like that. There we go. We're in. Uh. What were we doing? We're creating a new user to use temporarily. Uh, donkey at, I don't remember how to do this. MySQL grant user privileges. Chaka, 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 chaka. There we go. Grant all on blank to blank. So yeah, grant all on, ooh, actually show databases. Do we have databases to work from? Right, we have bow.kim, so let's go to bow.kim. Oh yeah, okay, so we can say grant all on uh, bow.kim. dot fluke to donkey donkey at at local host and then what was the part uh, identified by password right Identified by password, uh, donkey one, two, three, four. Oh, right, I have to do this under root. Okay. Out of my SQL, we go into root mode. I messed up my password. Okay, I'm in root. Now we enter as root. Okay, then we just do this all over again. And there we go. Okay, so now we can use the temporary <laughs> donkey user on localhost with the password of donkey123. So user Four. here. Yeah, yeah, donkey. And then 
was it lowercase or uppercase? Okay. So yeah, and doing something like this for every one of your mm -hmm. projects, like I said, is a good idea. You know, you want to restrict one user to your database per, you know, like uh, one project. You know, keep each mm -hmm. project in one table or whatever tables or in one database and only have one user be able to get into that database so that if anybody wants to get to that database they're going to have to they're going to have to have full control of your server to be able to even look at the file to get to this point you know okay yeah but anyway so we are connected via mysqli and mm -hmm. if we have any connection errors we're not even going to redirect. We're just going to die. And we're going to mm -hmm. be like, hey, something's wrong. Usually for production, you don't want to do that, right? But for now, while you're developing, like, this is fine. This is a good way to know if anything's wrong. Um, yeah, usually if you're going to be on production, you would just send this via a different function to a log somewhere. And then the when the log is rewritten, it would trigger on your server so that only the developer would get the notice that like, hey, we weren't able to connect to the database. Something must be wrong, you know, blah, blah, blah. But for now, this is good. And uh, so, yeah, let's just do a test to see. We have connected. Da, 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 da. So if somebody tries to log in right now, let's go back to the logins or to the, yeah, we're on the login page. And if we try to log in right now, it's not going to find the process login. Oh, oops. So this is going to get a little confusing because of the naming structure, but Basically, we have to do the folders out a little bit. So back here, reset this. If we try to log in as an empty thing, God damn it! what did I do wrong? Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's go back to the beginning, click here to log in. And if we try to do this, oh, interesting. Oh, it's trying to do the uh, header. Right. So we tried to pass them an empty thing and it went all the way into the function login. And mm -hmm. then we didn't have, we had an empty user and an empty password. So it went here and then it went to the bat login page. But there is no login page. We have to go login, login. So then it will go back to the right place. Okay. So from login login if we try to log in it'll just go back here mm. nothing happens right there is mm -hmm. a session message in there somewhere so if we want to do that we can at the very start of the page we can do php and we can say session stopped just like we did here oops mm -hmm. the function and then we can say if session message is not empty, we would say um, message equal session message massage equal session message, and then we could just echo it out. In fact, we can just do this, really, if we wanted. And so if we do that right now, we are missing your username and password. Please try again. And we'll get into this at some other point, but another thing we want to deal with is any time you're going to be posting variables onto your pages, we want to scrub the data because there's a lot of ways to inject bad stuff. Like, for instance, let's say somebody was able to manipulate this page so that they pretended like there was a ses session message, right? Mm -hmm. If they did that, you, they could set it so that the session message held JavaScript 
that could do bad things on somebody's site, right? Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, that could do bad things on somebody's browser, like get their credit card information or whatever. Yeah. And so you want to always make sure that you're scrubbing the data or that any time you're outputting anything, it's done by your hands and not through variables. So, for instance, instead of having a session message here, we can have a session error, and we could say mm -hmm. is equal to uh, no input, right? Mm -hmm. And then w instead of having to uh, just post out whatever message was being sent, we can just mm -hmm. check for a session error, and we can say if session error is mm -hmm. equal to no input, a very specific thing, then we can post out on our end using our own hands. Uh, we were missing your pass, your username or password. Please try again. And that okay. way, there is when we log in and we do that, we know exactly what's being printed on the page instead of relying on messages that are being passed on via variables that potentially could have been inputted by a user via some other thing, right? So there are different ways of holding on to security and we'll learn about that in the future. But for now, uh, since scrubbing takes a lot of time and we know exactly what messages we want to send, we can just use like variables with certain keys that we can use to echo out the messages we need. Okay. Cool. In fact, uh, if let's say instead of doing a dive, we want to let the user know of some kind of connection failure, we could also do something like this. We could go copy all of this because this is a fail state, right? Mm -hmm. And boop, boop, and we could say the error would be uh, no connection, right? And then we, it would lead back to the login page, and then we can add an else if for this, and we can say no connection, and we can echo out we were not able to connect to our DB. Call Bao and bother him about it. Right? Mm. Yeah. And so if we had any kind of database error, then that would show up. And then I bet if we try to do the username and password right now, oh, never mind, because we did connect successfully. So. It didn't show up. But if we did, by changing, let's say, their password, right? If we go to login again, PHP. Oh, god damn it. What's going on? There we go. Let's login. Oh, right, because we're going to have uh, different session things go on. If the session does. Hmm, wait, that's not right. What's going on? What the fuck? What the fuck? What happens if I do this? Then it works. What happens if I do that? Then it doesn't work. Something with our session variable there is breaking this. What the fuck? What did I do? It was working fine when it was just this, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it must be something on how I coded it. Oh, there we go. In fact, you know what? I'm sick of not seeing errors while on this development. So on live production, you don't want to be doing what I'm about to do. But for what we're about to do, you do want to do. For like local development and for sandbox development, you'll want to mm -hmm. go to your... This is something you'll your IT person will probably set up for you. But uh, mm -hmm. if it, if you're getting like, you know, 
we had I an have error. an IT person. Huh? I have an IT person. When you work for a company, you will. No, nice. But uh, if you want to be able to see the errors exactly of what's wrong, right? Mm hmm. Uh, you'll want to go into here. Oops, not the Apache. JK. You'll want to go into PHP. And we're using 7.0. But to check, we can look at the PHP version. And we're on 7.0. So we'll go into the 7.0 folder. And we'll want to go into Apache 2. And there's a configuration file and an initiation file or initializer mm -hmm. file. I don't know what the dot any actually means, but we'll want to vim the fuck into that. So we're vimming into that sucker. And what, is, what does that do? Vim is the uh, text editor inside of our Ubuntu server. Oh, okay. And so we're editing this file. Uh, and like I told you last time, if you want to be able to edit things inside of servers, uh, learn how to use yeah. Vim, you, go to Vim, Vim Adventures. Yeah. I, I, I got stuck. You got stuck? Yeah. Uh, where'd you get Is stuck? there like a walkthrough? Yeah, there's a walkthrough. You can look on YouTube. There are walkthroughs. They can help you. Okay. But yeah, learn how to Vim because Viming is uh, pretty important. You should at least be able to, you know, edit a small bit of text on Vim. That's going to help you immensely later. Let's see. And instead of just doing page down right now, I could use Vim to search for what I'm looking I, for. I, I, you're, you're going in and out a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we're looking for the error section in this configuration for PHP. Da, 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 da. Where are you? File uploads, paths, post max size, class register variable, data handling, HTML errors, not HTML errors. Log errors, yes. Display startup errors, display errors. Here we go. Okay. So, right now, uh, by default, they have the display error set to off. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to see the errors. Oops. See the errors. So we write that. Oh, this is read only. Never mind. I forgot. We have to sudo in super user this shit because it's in, you know. Uh, this is uh, very dangerous. You know, thing that we're doing here, messing with uh, server stuff. Sewing errors. Uh huh. So we'll go back to the error section. Here's error reporting, and here's the display. Display errors. And then that, and then to. Oops, not get push. Well. So we save the PHP file. All we have to do is service Apache 2 and restart. Uh, authentication required. Oh, Jesus. Authentication complete. Okay. Well, did, did you actually do it, though? I don't even know if they... Denied. I must have put it in wrong. I'm going to do it just with sudo, and then it should do it fine without doing that weird authentication thing. And yeah, okay, I guess it did it. I thought there usually is a return message that says Apache has restarted, but whatever. So now, if we were to have errors again, like that missing semicolon mm -hmm. here, if we try to go to this page now, there we go. Now it will show you exactly what the error is. So oh, syntax yeah. error, we were expecting a, you know, something, but instead a something. And so we just add that in and then the page ain't broke anymore. So we put this all back in and we do login. We were not able to connect to our DB, call Bal and bother him because we had mm -hmm. changed 
a password here. Okay. So now when we do log in, we're able to get the MySQL connection. Great. That's the first part. Now we'll mm -hmm. go back to MySQL again uh, and we're logging in this donkey, if I remember. Actually, uh, since Bowski, my regular username, has access anyway, I'll just use that one. And then we'll go into use bow.kim. Doing that web thing with my friend right now. Rip is weak and tired. I will hit you up in a bit. Okay, so we're logged back into the database. Let's look at the table. We have the contacts table that we made last time. It still uh -huh. exists, but the user that connects to it does not. The files that connect to it do, don't exist, but whatever. So uh, let's see. We will create a new table, right? Mm -hmm. Create table, and we'll name this users. And instead of users, we'll have their username, and then we'll have their password. But the password will be hashed or encrypted. It's mm -hmm. you know, one-way encryption so that when we check for their password, we actually don't know what their password is. We just have the encrypted version to check when they input it, you know? Mm -hmm. So create table users, and then we'll need an ID for it as well. Uh, so ID, just like last time. We'll have an ID, which will be a primary key. Uh, not null. And uh, I don't remember the rest of the setup. And I don't remember if what I... Is, what does not null mean? Not null means it can't be empty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, MySQL create table. Example. Not null, because null just means uh, empty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, here's a tutorial for creating a table. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, give me that. Okay. Uh... Ch -ch -ch. Here we go. We'll have a uh, ID uh, and primary key is not what we start with. It's int. Uh, and we'll do like a, it's just me and you. So we'll do like a, you know, uh, four digit int, right? Which will max you mm -hmm. out at 9,999. If you know that you're gonna have a lot of users, then you should probably set it to like a five digit int. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, or like if you know you're gonna have a million users, you're gonna have to set it up at a, you know, seven digit int, etc. Mm -hmm. But for now, like a four digit int is fine. It's gonna be not null. It's gonna auto increment so that it'll start from zero and go all the way up to 999. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a second one that's called uh, Chaka 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 user. And that's going to be, you know, uh, var car variable characters for, let's say, like 50. Uh, that might be too much. Like maybe 30. Usernames of max of 30 spaces right mm -hmm. or s 30 uh characters yeah and then we'll have a password of i don't know what kind of encryption we're going to use yet but usually they're going to be fairly long so let's do about 60 just to be safe mm -hmm. and then we'll figure it out from there okay so oh and then the primary key we will be using will be the id key or the id mm -hmm. column so those three columns, that's what we'll work with. Uh, and uh, usually, actually, for a user, a good one to have is email as well. So that yeah. if you know they forget their password, we can send it back to them. And so we can have that for variable characters of like 40 should be fine. Okay, so let's save that. I have an error 
in my create characters thing, I think it's um, my use of the wrong type of uh, oh. Huh, that's weird. I think it's the wrong use of the characters here. So, I think when I did create table, I can't use this. I'm supposed to use this. Oh, mm -hmm. hmm. That's so weird. I guess we'll try it without any of those and see what happens. So the, in the example we're looking at, they don't even use the single quotes. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll try it without the single quotes for everything. Uh, ch -ch -ch. And no single quotes for you. And just to be sure, I'd look at it. Create table, if not exists. We know it doesn't exist, so it doesn't matter. Tasks, ours is called users, ID, int, uh -huh. not null, as well. default, not null, default, null, default, null, primary key, here's the task. Yeah, this should be good. I guess we'll try it out. Hmm. You have an error. Check the manual. Create. Oh, wow, I'm a dumbo. So everything was fine, except for the part where I can't spell. Mm -hmm. So create table needs an E. Yeah. So there we go. Oh god, now what's here? You have an error, check the manual for the right syntax near ID. And for some reason it's not saving I guess because it's an error, it's not saving what I put in last time. Uh primary key ID. That's interesting. This should be working fine. But I don't know why it's not. Primary key ID. Am I crazy? It says task ID there. Does that do anything? Uh, well, task ID, they're doing that because their column name is called task ID. So they're okay. calling that one and setting that as a primary. For us, we named our ID. Maybe I'll add in the single quotes and see if that helps with all of this. We'll do that, we'll do that, and uh, we'll add that there, and, and that, mm. and uh, near ID in. So actually, I don't think it likes the single quotes either. Mm -mm. Which is weird because I thought we were supposed to use single quotes instead of the usual ticks because usually for columns you do want to use ticks. But I thought I had seen last time that they wanted single quotes, but I guess not. I don't know. We're going to try the ticks and we'll see if it works. I don't know. I'm very confused. I'm a very confused person. They don't like the t ticks either. Oh, okay. So they do want the ticks, but they don't like the part where I did ID. I'm very confused about why they don't like me setting up the primary key in such a way. Let's look at a different tutorial. Mm, yeah, no, they do it exactly the same way. I am so darn confused. Okay, comma, primary key. Do I not have a comma? Oh, okay, I see the issue. So the hmm. reason why it's giving me that error is because mm -hmm. everything is good except for the part where... Uh, <coughs> except for the part where I need a comma after the last column. Well, oh, yeah. lovely. So, yeah. Now, it's fine. We have a table, show tables. There's the users table. Describe the users table to me. And we mm -hmm. have four different columns, ID, user, uh, password, and email. And the ID mm -hmm. is supposed to be null. Uh, in fact, 
we could set it so that the user and password and email, all of those should be not null. Um, mm -hmm. But it really doesn't matter because we're doing the checks and the login anyway. Um, so yeah, let's continue on. We have a table. Okay. And we have uh, the connection to the DB. We have not connected. What is this? Oh, we have connected. Okay, so we've connected. So then once we've connected uh, to the DB, we can first do a, we will first uh, scrub the username so that we, they mm -hmm. can't put in like my SQL code into their username to mm -hmm. manipulate our connection basically. And to do that, we use MySQLi escape string. I think it's escape string. Let's look here. MySQLi escape string. You can do that, make a username that halves the thing. Yeah, well, any input that's going to be connected to the database, right? Because mm -hmm. as you've been watching me use, you know, the coding in here, right? Mm -hmm. to do things and last time as you saw we can like you know put in new uh comments into our contacts or whatever that we did right yeah so, so you can write that code but inside the form and if somebody hasn't escaped the string then it will destroy uh their database you could potentially select stuff out here's an xkcd uh one Mm -hmm. that comic that deals with it so in it it says hi this is your son's school we're having some computer troubles oh dear did he break something in a way did you really name your son robert and tick uh closing parentheses semicolon drop table students and tick oh yes little bobby tables we call him uh. And so, you know, as we've seen, what that would do is mm -hmm. it would put in Robert for that name string, but then because mm -hmm. of the tick and the parentheses and parentheses and the semicolon, it would, the system would think, okay, that's the end of that statement. Give me the next statement. And the next statement would be drop table students. And if they had a table named students, that's gone. And if you don't have backups, you're fucked, right? And so that's why we have to escape the strings. You have to sanitize your database inputs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, MySQL provides ways to do that. And one is called escape string. And that makes sure that it's always going to put like specific hash or slashes in front of the uh, special characters that are used in MySQL so that MySQL won't try to run whatever you put in there, right? Mm -hmm. So here's an example of using the real escape string. Da 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 da. And you just do MySQL real escape string for the same variable. And that just makes yeah. it so that, you know, it'll be slashed. But I don't know why it's called real escape string because it's just, you just do escape string. It, the old one used to be called MySQL real escape string and often people would make a function called like ES or something just so that it's like simpler to write because writing all of this you know it gets kind of old after a while but anyway so MySQI escape string for user user equals right so we're scrubbing that and then we also want to scrub password so we'll do the exact same thing for password Boop. All right, so now we know that the inputs that we're working with are scrubbed because they came from that post variable, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, depending on, uh, this is where we get into encryption, right? And PHP mm -hmm. 7 has an encryption library that they that's already on there that people use for passwords. So best way to encrypt passwords for PHP 7. Uh, password hashing for PHP 7. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm using the wrong terminology. You should hash them, not encrypt them. Because uh, with encryption, if you have the right keys, that means you can take that whatever string it is that's been encrypted and bring it back to the regular password. What we really mm -hmm. want to do is hash it into something that we just compare to later. There's password hash and password verify to handle passwords in PHP. If you're using PHP versions less than five, then there's other things you have to do. But for now, password hash is good enough. Creates a new password hash using a strong one-way hashing algorithm. Password hash is compatible with crypt. Therefore, password hashes created by crypt can be used with password hash. So yeah, crypt is the one I've heard suggested to be used, usually for mm -hmm. hashing. And that's why I was thinking of mm. encryption, but it's a one-way string hashing, right? So mm -hmm. we can get into what types of things we used to use and whatnot, but uh, basically, if you you can do uh, crypt by itself, and it will turn it into a certain uh, hash. Mm -hmm. But it's always better to have a salt, and a salt is another string that you add personally from your side of the server, so that no matter if people have a reverse hash library that some of the more popular uh, hashing systems have ended up with, mm -hmm. uh, because you have a salt added in, there's no way for them to actually get the reversed, like use the reverse library to figure out what your hash actually meant ever again. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so like uh, a reverse hash library exists for uh, a certain uh, hashing system that used to be popular before. And so for popular passwords, if somebody broke into your DB and got the user's password hash, they could often, mm -hmm. oftentimes figure out what that password were, was by looking through the reverse hash library. And they would just search for that hash and they would then have to look at, uh, oh, this hash actually is password one, two, three, four. And then they would be able to look for that kind of thing. But anyway, so using the salt is good. For now, we'll just make a weak salt within our system. Uh, but yeah, so let's say for passwords, we do, we escaped it already and we'll use the crypt function if I can type. Mm -hmm. And usually you can keep the salt string somewhere else, like in a more secure location on your uh, site that can not be read by anybody, you know, mm -hmm. by turning reading privileges off and only used by one program, which in this case would be PHP. But uh, for now, we'll just put in a string of donkey. with one, two, three, four in the middle. So every password that comes into our system will be hashed by the crypt system with the salt of Don one, two, three, four key. Okay? Okay. And so when it all comes out, we'll have user and boop and the password and we'll see what that looks like. La 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 la. La 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 la. So we'll just re Oh, uncaught error, function crypt, thrown in. So we did not use crypt correctly, apparently. But we have the password. Oh, well, I have to learn how to spell. That usually helps. So if we do this again, there we go. So that was our username, and this is our hashed password that we got mm -hmm. back. But doesn't say it sure shit doesn't say donkey anymore, that's for sure. No. Uh okay. So great. After we get the username and password, then what we'll want to do is do a my SQL I uh, query string. Query string. And we want to search for that user and for that password, right? Mm -hmm. So we will say select user.
treasure. Actually, we don't even need any of the stuff. Uh, all we need is the ID because we'll get that ID and it's a unique ID. It's the primary key and it's unique uh -huh. inside of, oh, oops, we forgot to put in the unique variable for that column. But anyway, usually when we describe that table, it would be a unique ID, right? Inside of the DB. Uh -huh. And so we use that DB all throughout the site in the session ID, right? But uh, for now, we just need that select from about doc scan. We're already connected to the database, so we don't have to specify that. We can uh -huh. just say users where name, no user, where user equals, and then we'll do something there, and then password equals, and then we'll do something there. And then we'll say limit to one because it should be limited to one. If there's more, then there's an issue with your uh, system. Oh, and the column users in the DVL should also be unique. You don't want to have the same username being used, etc., etc. But anyway, mm -hmm. so then we can say just escape out of that string and we'll say user and password and then we would do mysql generate this i mysql query will equal mysqli query Oop. like so uh, with this query string. Uh -huh. Okay. And then we'll say if mysqli, if we're able to get that back, we'll do something else. We'll do another failure state. And we can say, we can just send them the no connection thing again. But if uh, we do get something back, we can say, uh, yeah. So we would check the, uh, what? I'm confused. Oh, here we go. We would set that, we would take that, we would set a new variable for that ID that we got, right? Uh -huh. We would say, SQL result. In fact, I did this wrong. This should be user query string. We want to be as descriptive with our variables as we can, right? So we are yeah. querying the user database, so I should say user query string and not MySQL, that's too generic. And user query string, MySQL I query is the user query string, user query. And so if the user query was good, then we'll say the ID is equal to mysqli uh, whoop, fetch uh, I don't remember how to do that part we don't need that part oh actually I did want to read about this password verify but we'll look at it later uh, let's see mysqli connect and uh, what we want to we got the connection, we want to query, and then we want to get the results. Where's results? Fetch results, that would be under F. Get results. Examples. Here we go. Do, 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 do. We do the query, and then, oh yeah, results. Fetch a search. Right. Okay. Oh, so instead of doing that, let's be very clear here. We make the connection, minus go connect zero. We do a select results equals the query. Right, okay, that's what they're saying. And then that itself has all of these inside of it. Okay, 
So user query in of itself has the fetch associ function. I'm pretty sure. Yes, that's right. And uh. Uh, that's weird because, yeah, that, don't worry about it. It's uh, very different from how it used to be, but that's good. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we say that, and then uh, what do I do after that? Well, let's actually die this out first to see what we'll what we'll be manipulating. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, actually, it's not going to work because when we do that query right now, we're going to find that it's going to go back and it's going to say we had a connection error because we actually don't have anybody by that name, right? Mm -hmm. So actually the thing we want to send is another new message that's called no user. And that's going to say we could not find your, uh, we could not find you within our system or your password was wrong. There we go. So if we tried to do that again, log in, we would, oh, that's interesting. It should still send us the error uh, for no user, but I don't know why it didn't. No user, no user. Let's refresh this page. Then let's try it. All right. Hmm. That's weird. Hmm. Interesting. So it's getting through the whole process and it's getting redirected, but it's not hitting this no user thing. Let's put a die in here to see that we're hitting this line. <laughs> No user, man. Da -da 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 -da. Hmm. No, it's not hanging that. So we're mm -hmm. having an issue where we're getting into here. Let's just put it in a random die variable to see where we die off. Interesting. Or that. Uh, it, we shouldn't be redirecting. We should be hitting this function. So let's double check that we're hitting this function. We're hitting the function. Oh, jeez. Function. Function, indeed. All right. So let's try that again. It's not even hitting that. Hmm, that's interesting. So then we have to figure out why aren't we hitting the login thing? This is a reverse thing that's going on. So let's post it here. Uh -huh. We're hitting the process. Okay, we'll redo everything. Wow, it's not even getting to there. So something is definitely wrong. We should be hitting the login process, right? But it's not you would think so. that, yeah. So something that something has gone completely wrong. So let's just put a die here. We're hmm. hitting the file. Let's at least see if we're hitting the file. So we reloaded everything. We're going to log in. We're not even hitting the file. So something that we changed here drastically, dr drastically changed uh, how this is being hit. So let's look at what would happen if we got rid of this and then tried to do it. Hmm. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing is going on. Let's double check the form. So we'll turn off the mobile mode too. Um, the form says login process login. And we've mm. been hitting that fine all this time. So the pa uh, question would be, why did it stop hitting that? That's pretty interesting. So let's manually try hitting that 
file to see if everything's okay there. Ah, uh, it's not okay. There's some weird things going on. Undefined index for action for five and eight. Five. Oh, I see. That's why. Uh, we had a connection error. Session's been closed. And so all the changes we've been making all this time, they haven't been going on. Okay, so there's not going to be any issues now. So the reason, the way I figured out that it was a session error, like with our, uh, our FTP client, mm -hmm. is because this says that it's having an un, un, I, uh, undefined index action. Mm -hmm in our process file at line five and line eight. Basically, this means we are using a variable called action inside of an, a certain array. It doesn't say which array, but basically it's saying the array key action doesn't exist. And action is the array key in the process file that we use for our post, right? <coughs> oh, gesundheit. Uh, oh, gesundheit. But if you see here, sorry after we added the die command it's on line seven mm -hmm. so the fact that this is saying it's on line five instantly let me know okay this is out of date these warnings yeah. are out of date so now everything's good we'll make a little change here we'll save it and if we load that we're hitting the file here we go uh -huh. we're back in business all these dies we can go away and now if we go back to the normal login folder, we click here to log in. And now we'll log in as donkey with a mm -hmm. password of some random thing that doesn't exist. We will get the wow. I forgot to get rid mm -hmm. of this. <laughs> but yeah, basically if we process that form, it will give us the no user die, which means when we redo it again, it would send it back to the login screen and say, we could not find you within our system or your password was wrong. Great. Mm. So we got that part. So what if they are in here? What if everything is good? Then what it should it say? Then we should get this user fetch association. So let's create a user. Uh, next time we'll come back in and uh, make a user creation table, or I mean a page okay. for it. But for now, we'll manually, using uh, our MySQL connection, insert into users, and we'll say set user to donkey man, right? Mm -hmm. Capital D, donkey man. And we'll say set password to a certain hash that we don't have. And then we'll set email. Oh, boy, I'm crazy. You only have to say set once. Mm -hmm. And then so set password to a hash that we're going to have. And then set email to uh, donkey at donkey.com. Donkey man at donkey.com. OK. So we just have to get that hash password. So for now, inside of this, we'll uh, do a quick scripting to get a hash password. Mm -hmm. So we'll just do an echo or just make it a die here as well. And we'll do echo crypt and we'll use the same salt that we'll be using in our password. And then the password that we'll make will be for the string donkey one, two, three, four. Okay. So right now, if we were to, let's get rid of all of this and what's, run this script. What's the crypt command? Crypt is what uh, hashes our password, right? Okay. So usually in the back end, this is happening. But for now, we want a hashed thing 
without mm -hmm. having to make the whole other page for it. So this is going to be our hash that we use for this password. So we're setting up, we're inserting into the users table right now. Mm -hmm. We're making a new user called Donkey Man with a capital D with a password that's been already hashed using the same pa uh, process that we'll use within our system and then uh, giving it an email of Donkey Man at Donkey. Okay, so if we select blank, select star from users now, mm -hmm. we get Donkey Man and his password. So great. Okay. So now if we go back to the login and we do Donkey Man and we do Donkey1234, that was his password, and we log in. Oh shit. I don't remember if I capitalized Donkey or not. Shit. We fucked ourselves. <laughs> um, let's do a die here to see if this matches the password at all. For now, Donkey1234, login. Is this the same as the other one? D0X, AA7U, BC3Y6. Okay, that is the right one. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's turning out that when we do this, oh, there we go. I did the query wrong. So now when we do this, we should end in here and it should die with whatever result that we should have, mm -hmm. and so we do donkey1234, and we log in, then we get uh, an error because we tried to die with what's in here, which is actually an array. So we'll want mm -hmm. to print R, the user query fetch association, and then die, and what that will do is give us the array with the ID variable that we called for right? Mm -hmm. Call for this ID and we will have the ID value which was donkey man cool. ID 1. Mm -hmm. So then we can say awesome we got it and we can say we can say list equals an ID and basically how list works is if you have an array of some things and you uh -huh. don't want them in an array but in a bunch of variables, mm -hmm. like let's say I had, instead of just ID, I had also gotten the username again, right? Mm -hmm. And I had gotten the password and the email, then, you know, the return of this query would come in the form of an array of ID, user, password, and email, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't want to go around having to associate this to an array and then calling the array values by keys. I can just use the list function and say these, these variables from now on will associate to these in that order specifically. And then mm -hmm. you, instead of doing fetch associate, we'll want to do fetch row. I think and then it will give us all of these in these pretty variables in one way one simple command basically but for now we just need the ID so we'll say list ID and we'll get the ID so if I did this we should get a die of one yay so we were able to associate this variable to this ID and then now that we have that, we can set session variable of user ID, let's say, to our ID. And then we can send them to a new page that is with a success message, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, since we've logged in, we can just send them back to the login. Oh. And another session variable that we're going to use for logout is the session logged. 
So we're going to set the session log to true. So we got the user ID. And here we should probably also unset the user ID. So unset session. In fact, since we have a user ID, we can use that our, as our logging variable. So if there is no user ID in sessions, that means we should never be logged in, right? So uh -huh. we'll just do session user ID and we'll send them back to the login page. So all of our process for logging in and logging out is set. So now all we have to do is go back here and all we have to say here is session has already started and we'll do a big if command. We'll say if session user user ID uh -huh. is empty then we show them the generic login page, yes? Yes. So we can just show them this, and in fact, I'll do it this way. This is a different way in PHP to do if commands with a colon, mm -hmm. because you know closing and opening all of these when you're dealing with HTML code is such a bother, right? So you can just do this, and then you can end if here, or you can just do an else. So, boop, or actually, how does that go? I don't remember. Because usually you just do this, and that would turn it off. So anything in this if would now be done that way. Uh, colon if else PHP. Alternative syntax for control structures. If and if, like I mentioned. And then mm -hmm. if you have else, okay, you just do the keyword else. Okay, so else, and then we'll do this, and then end if at some point. All right, excellent. And then we'll say, else we'll say, you're already logged in. Click here to log out. And then we'll give it boop, some kind of link for them to log out via button, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, that should do it, basically. So first, let's see if that works. We're not logged in right now. So we go donkey, donkey. Donkey man, donkey one, two, three, four, log in. Oh, and of course, all of these variables for errors, mm -hmm. we definitely want inside of this if, not outside of it, because these are only pertaining to the login stuff. So after we print out that session or that, you know, error message, mm -hmm. we should set the error back to unset it so that next time we have an error, we can, you know, have a new error. So if we do this again, basically we logged in and it's saying you're already logged in. So click here to log out. So for that, we can use the process again, right? And if we do it as a post, it's going to be hard for us to reach this log out unless we have a form with a button with a hidden variable, which we can mm. do, you know, but instead, let's just have a simple link that can just go to that process. And if we want to do that, uh, to be safe, we shouldn't directly connect to this. Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, we would want to put it into a separate file specifically for logging out. So if we want to do that, let's get rid of the logout system here. We don't need that here. And instead, we'll make a, in the processes, we'll make a new file. And it'll be called logout.php. 
and in there we'll put all of the logout process stuff and we don't really need any security in here because if somebody wants to log out that's like the least dangerous thing to our system ever right uh -huh. so we can literally just do a session start just so that the session started and then we can say unset session uh, meow session variable and we're using the user ID right so we can uh -huh. say unset user ID and then we can say session destroy and that's it that's all we need so basically as soon as somebody gets into the uh, clicks any link for this process it'll just do all of this and then we can header and redirect them back to the uh, back to the login screen right mm -hmm. or even better just to the index page so we'll send them back to login and then we will exit this file and you always want to make sure if you're relocating someone to a different file you want mm -hmm. to do an exit because it, without the exit any other code that you put under the header all of this will still run even though your okay. browser has redirected because the server doesn't care if the browser is redirected the server just is going to keep on doing what it was doing right so we did that so now for here we can say login process log out dot php and so if we refresh this page session still allows us to be logged in because user id exists but if we say log out now boom we go back here and if we go to the back to the login page now we uh are out of it but i misspelled session somewhere so we should fix that uh let's see in the login login on 13 here we go there we go so if we come back here now we're logged back out. Let's log back in one last time just to check mm -hmm. what happened. Donkey man, let's say first this is all of this is empty. What happens then? We get that we were missing your username and password one. What if it's mm -hmm. wrong user password stuff? Then it's going to well it should error out and tell us that uh it couldn't find us, but it's not getting that one. So we have an error there. Let's look for that error. So Right now, within our login process, we can, uh, the login process file, when we put in a username and password that doesn't exist, we should be getting the error that's the no user error, right? Mm -hmm. But instead of getting the no user error, we're not getting anything. So why is that happening? To double check, let's first try putting a die command with meow at this else for no mm -hmm. user because if it had user queries then ah I see this is the issue here mm. we are checking for this if statement for user query user mm. query when we're checking for user query it's not about if the user query return got one row or zero rows checking for user query is only good for knowing if you had an accident within uh, your query so if you wrote a bad query right like this then mm. it would hit this one because the user query is bad because it was an unsuccessful query but if mm -hmm. we do a successful query that returns zero rows then it's still going to be in this one because it was a successful query. So in fact, okay. for here, we don't want to say no user. We want to say bad query. Mm -hmm. And then since it's a bad query, we could put in another thing for an error for bad query. But usually if mm -hmm. you have a bad query, you don't want to be sharing that to the outside world. So we won't make a bad query one. We'll just say, we'll stay silent, right? And we'll mm -hmm. just go back to the header and people will be frustrated and bad shit will happen. So that would be bad. So let's just do a no connection one and that'll be good enough. Uh, actually, let's just do bad query. Why not? Why not? That way, 
as a developer, you'll always know. You'll always know exactly what the issue was, right? Bad query. Mm -hmm. We have bad code. And we fucked up. We're sorry. So that would be good enough. Mm -hmm. And if we actually will be really want to check for no user, what we have to say is what we have to do is go back to uh, how PHP is uh, mm -hmm. MySQLi, I mean, the MySQL queries are done. And we have to use this num rows. So we want to do num rows, and that will give us the amount of rows that we got back. So mm. we'll say if else. Put this here for the success one. And uh, actually, it's probably easier if we do it this way. So for the success, if. The error would be if user query uh -huh. num rows, yeah, num underscore rows is equal to zero. That means we didn't get any returns. Then we can do another error. That would say uh -huh. no user. Hi, sweetie. Uh -huh. Michael? Uh -huh. Do you hear me? I'm on the phone. What? I'm on the phone. Oh, okay. Anyway, continue. So yeah, we'll do no users here. And then mm -hmm. else if there are, you know, anything besides not having zero rows, then we'll do the regular success command. So now if we do the in non-existent user with a password and we try to log in, mm -hmm. we'll now get this. We cannot find you within our system or your password was wrong. And finally, if we do a successful mm -hmm login we will log in we're back to the login page but now oh shit but now we're showing this page with the sessions and we can leave uh -huh. this page and we can go back to the page but since we're still on the same server it remembers that we're logged in because it still has the user okay. ID. and now if we click this log out it will do the logout uh -huh. process unset the user stuff and now it'll ask us for the same stuff again. And oh, that's nice. how a login system works, just using session variables in a database. Yay. So that's it. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. That yeah. And uh, next time, we'll uh, add a menu and we will add in a user creation thing. Uh, but for now, that's the basics of how you would do a login system. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank right. you. No problem. Ugh. Yeah. Got any questions for me tonight? Um. No, I I I have to go through that again, and I I might after I I do that. Mm -hmm. Um. Nothing off the top of my head. Okay, great. Um, I'm still, I'm still playing with uh, my SQL and how it interacts with things. There are some commands that I didn't necessarily recognize. They were a while ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just if you have any questions, just let me know. And I'll up try to upload this by the end of tonight, but it'll be up by at least okay. you know Saturday or Sunday. So. Okay. Yeah. And can I just email you with questions? Like just that. Yeah, you can email me with questions. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Cool. How are things? Things are good. How are things with you? Yeah, things are okay. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, things are okay. I don't know. Trying to get all this stuff done, do all this stuff. I don't know. I'm, uh, 
I don't get a lot of social interaction. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, trying to change 